Nearly six years ago, Japan's Fukushima nuclear plant suffered a triple meltdown, and now it appears as if radiation levels there are on the rise. Now, at an estimated 530 sieverts per hour, the radiation level inside the plant now far exceeds the previous high of 73 sieverts per hour. This is recorded uh, soon after that triple meltdown took place in March of 2011. Now, Gizmodo reports that officials with TEPCO aren't entirely sure why radiation levels are on a dramatic upward trend. Either the previous readings were insufficient or incorrect, or conditions inside the plant are changing. The problem is, the interior condition of the plant is still a big mystery because all of the robotic, robotics being sent in to investigate are destroyed within hours. Now, a remotely operated machine that was designed to withstand exposure of up to 1,000 total sieverts was sent into the Unit 2 reactor for the first time since the 2011 earthquake and tsunami. So at the previous peak of 73 sieverts per hour, they were thinking this is going to be, this will be great. It'll run for about 10 hours. But since it was actually recording 530 sieverts per hour, it lasted no more than two. So before the robot malfunctioned, its cameras discovered a horrific six and a half foot hole in the metal grating underneath the pressure vessel in the reactor's primary containment vessel, a huge hole that officials say uh, they suspect that this gash was created by nuclear fuel that melted and then pierced through the vessel after the tsunami knocked out uh, Fukushima's backup cooling system. Who knows what else is going on in there because the robot uh, quickly malfunctioned or possibly they shut it down because they said, oh, okay, we've seen enough. Things are pretty bad inside of uh, unit two's reactor. So it's difficult to say for sure because it has been nearly impossible to in assess the conditions inside. Radiation levels there are so high, it's been impossible to use any existing technology to explore this area. It's highly radioactive. Um, and now, just to give you a little context, one sievert of cumulative radiation exposure is the maximum lifetime limit for NASA astronauts. A short duration exposure of just four to five sieverts pretty much guarantees that you're going to die within 30 days and, uh, you know, probably very gruesome death at that. Higher doses will kill you much faster. But they were able to create this robot, the Scorpion, that they thought would achieve um, at least a thousand sieverts total. And of course, it, it wasn't able to withstand the high amount there of only 530. But the international outlet, the News Lens, wants you to, you know, don't concern yourself with the fact that these radiation levels are much higher than expected and why they're on this massive upward trend, they want you to know the news is, uh, it's, it's not entirely accurate. It's taken out of context. So they explain that a sensor was briefly inserted into the Unit 2 containment vessel in 2012 that detected those 73 sieverts, but the radiation levels quickly disabled the electronics of any robotic device that was sent in to investigate. So it's taken TEPCO since 2012 to develop new technologies that could withstand this radiation. But of course, they clearly could not. Uh, the writer is arguing that the latest radiation levels are taken out of context because this is the first time that technology has been able to accurately measure radiation in that area of Unit 2. 530 sieverts is the highest that's been measured at Fukushima so far. It doesn't mean necessarily that levels are on the rise, but that a previously unmeasurable high radiation area has finally been measured and it's extremely worrying and worse than was expected with that gaping hole. So regardless of the hashtag alternative facts, plans to remove uh, spent nuclear fuel have been delayed again. 2018 is the earliest estimate there. New fuel leaks continue to be discovered. Cleanup costs are estimated to continue to rise by billions of dollars each year. It's going to take decades to remove the melted fuel debris from damaged reactors. And guess what, everyone? 300 tons of radioactive water are still pouring into the Pacific Ocean every single day. So it's going to be a long time before things at Fukushima are actually cleaned up, regardless of whatever alternative facts are put out there.
In case you haven't heard, InfoWars has become the most influential media outlet in America. We're making freedom go viral. And now we are proud to announce a new weapon in the epic battle against the globalist. InfoWars Prime, where you can watch live high definition feeds of the Alex Jones Show, plus exclusive insider videos from the InfoWars crew and behind the scenes action. Go to InfoWars.com forward slash app and download today. Today, InfoWars Prime is available right now for your iPhone or Android. You will have access to exclusive videos that you can't see anywhere else. And that means live coverage of events and breaking news on location as it happens. You can also take advantage of amazing deals from the InfoWars store that are only available for InfoWars Prime subscribers. That's InfoWars Prime at InfoWars.com forward slash app. And if you can hear my voice, you are the resistance.